до Светлодарска где-то полтора километра. Вот еще один прилет. Короче, влетел в буханку дрон. Видите, буханка, буханка вся прорезиненная. Вся в резине. Пассажир погиб, к большому сожалению. Ребята нам привезли. Это наши ребята. Всегда до нас приезжают. Последняя у них буханка. Говорит, окажи, помоги помощь. Короче, сделай. Мы пригнали до пацанов. Пацанам спасибо сказали, сделают. Там у них батя уже сказали, она ремонту не подлежит. Но пацаны сказали, все сделают мастера. Еще не такое делали. Ну, осколки, вся в осколках. Один человек только погиб сзади троих контузило. И все благодаря резине, что есть резина. Вот она дверь. Конечно, запах очень такой. Вот. Видите, если бы не резина, вот это. Осколки бы попрошивали дверь, и все бы влетело в ребят. А так один наш брат принял смерть. Вместе с этой буханкой отправим ребятам дронов пару-тройку штук отомстят за наших. На Авдеевском направлении. Сейчас будет сделано. Колесо уже поставили новое. Влетел сильно. The British government's policy on whether Ukraine can use the weapons it has provided to hit targets in Russia has become so confusing that even President Volodymyr Zelensky is embarrassed by a meeting with Prime Minister Keir Starmer this month. The Prime Minister proposed easing restrictions on the use of Britain's long-range storm shadow weapons immediately after taking office, the Times reports in an apparent change of policy. Zelensky wrote in delight on X that he had received permission to use storm shadow missiles against military targets on Russian territory. Today we had the opportunity to discuss the practical implementation of this decision, Zelensky wrote, sharing a photo of himself with Starmer at the NATO summit in Washington. A Ukrainian military source praised Starmer's stance, suggesting he had gone further than the previous Conservative government. This is a clearer and very strong message to partner countries, the source said at the time. However, the British government later said it had not in fact given Ukraine permission to use weapons in Russia, a position unchanged from the previous government. Defence sources said Britain had to persuade France, which produces the storm shadow, along with Britain and another key NATO ally, before it could allow Ukraine to fire missiles at Russia. They stressed that Britain was not in a position to act on its own in a matter that could fuel tensions with Moscow. It was unclear whether there was a legal basis for seeking permission from France and others. At the same time, the source said the UK's request had been made to allies and ministers were waiting for approval before talking to Ukraine. One former senior defence official suggested that another country involved in the weapons deployment would also need to give its approval, although the details remained unclear. Ben Barry, a senior fellow on land warfare at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, suggested allies were concerned that if the Storm Shadow missiles missed and mistakenly hit civilians, it could give Russia an excuse to escalate. The United States has granted Kyiv only limited permission to use certain weapons to strike Russian targets to defend the Kharkiv region near the border. Ukraine wants to be able to use missiles, like the Storm Shadow, to target airfields where Russian bombers are deployed to drop glide bombs, relatively cheap, upgraded bombs with new guidance systems. The Russians are capable of launching bombs tens of miles behind front lines. Professor Justin Bronk, an air power and military technology expert at the Royal United Services Institute, said that with cruise missiles and timely intelligence, Ukraine could target airfields in Russia and force Moscow to move its aircraft further away from the front line. This could reduce the number of sorties the Russians have to fly as their aircraft would have to fly further to hit their targets. <laughs>